Hey guys, what's up? So WWDC is a wrap and this year was a pretty big one for software. Apple changed its naming convention from a scattered number of OS versions across devices, now tying them all together under OS 26. So we have iOS 26, Watch OS 26, Mac OS 26, and so on. And it's not just the naming convention that gets unified, but the entire look and feel of the operating systems, they all get the new liquid glass aesthetic, making everything look sleek and modern. The most meaningful update in my opinion and the update I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for as well has been made to the iPad. I'm not gonna lie over the last few years I've grown pretty frustrated with the iPad or rather with Apple for not giving it the operating system it truly deserves. I mean it's such a powerful device but it's always felt more like a giant iPhone rather than something closer to a Mac which I think a lot of us were hoping for. The introduction of Apple Silicon and the fact that Apple made the high-end iPad Pros so incredibly powerful raised those expectations even higher but every year we thought this is going to be the year the iPad will live up to its potential we were disappointed by yet another incremental upgrade to a limited operating system. This year, I feel like Apple finally came through with iPadOS 26. Of course, I downloaded it to my device immediately. I've been testing it for a couple of days now and I'm pretty excited. Let's ramble. Hold up. Place go up when I pull up. They all on me like at once. So guys, before we take a little tour of iPad OS 26 and talk about some of my favorite features, I do want to preface this by saying that it is a developer beta, so there may be a few little quirks and bugs here and there. This is not meant to be a final version, and if something doesn't work quite right just yet, Apple will probably have all of that ironed out by the time the public version of iPadOS 26 officially launches. With that said, for a developer beta, I have to say it's already pretty impressive and things seem to be working fine for the most part. So yeah, the most obvious change is of course the design. Right from the lock screen, you can set up this cool depth effect for your photos and the liquid glass design becomes visible as soon as you swipe open your iPad. It really does look like you're moving a sheet of glass across the iPad to act access it. You can even see a bit of a prism effect at the bottom there. That attention to detail I can appreciate. And that look and feel has been implemented across the entire OS and the other OSs for that matter. Everything looks kind of layered and transparent as if you're moving glass across the screen. Now if you're really digging that look, you can step it up a notch by choosing the clear look in the customization options. For me personally, that's a bit much and it makes it harder for me to distinguish between different apps. So I'm sticking with a default look for now. Although I do like the tinted option, which lets you choose a monochrome color for all of your apps. I think that could be a vibe too. Maybe if I ever find myself with some extra time on my hands, it'll be fun to tinker with. Anyway, while the fresh new look is interesting, that's not why we're here. What most of us have been asking for such a long time is to have more freedom on the iPad. More freedom to customize, but also more freedom to move things around as we wish. In other words, to have an iPad that feels closer to a Mac. And I really believe Apple delivered on this with iPadOS 26. Multitasking has had a complete overhaul. I mean, we had a little taste of multitasking tasking with Stage Manager, and while I know a few people who really love Stage Manager, especially those who like to hook it up to an external monitor, I think it's safe to say that most of us were still a bit underwhelmed with the level of freedom it provided, since it still offers a pretty restrictive window management. iPadOS 26, for the first time ever, introduces true window management by us, the users. You can open any app, it will open as usual, but you can now resize it as you wish by moving the little tab at the bottom of the window. Windows no longer snap into some predetermined size and you can move them across the screen as you wish. You'll also see the little traffic light system we're used to on a Mac, which lets you close, minimize, or change to full screen. But long pressing the traffic light menu gives you a bunch of additional options like side by side or a proper tiling option. Personally, I'm a big fan of tiling, especially when working on an external monitor. And we'll get to that in a minute as well. Anyway, I do it on the Mac all the time using an app called Better Snap Tool, but this little built-in tool on the iPad works great. Now, if you don't like this windowed business at all and you just want to 
go back to using full screen apps only, you can totally still do this by going into the settings, multitasking and gestures. And from there you can choose between full screen apps and stage manager if that's more your jam. Or if you like toggling the windowing option on or off, you can do that right from the control center as well. Another important new feature that makes the iPad feel more like a Mac is the new toolbar at the top of the screen. Just swipe down from the top and you'll find all the usual suspects like file, edit, format and so on where you will find all the available options for that app. There's also a proper dock now that acts very much like the dock on a Mac and it's set to automatically show and hide, but you can toggle that on or off if you don't like that. You can also drag folders from the files app straight onto the dock for easy access. And the files app is finally getting a much needed overhaul as well. I mean, let's be honest, nobody likes the file app. And I think I'm putting it very mildly when I say that. It has been one of the most crippling things to the iPad experience. So to see Apple finally put some effort into this, is great. The new version of Files brings it much closer to the experience we get on a Mac, much better folder management. We can choose between icons, lists, columns. Long pressing a folder will give you a more Mac-like menu, including things like get info, compress, duplicate, all of that stuff. And you can now customize and tag folders. And I've seen some people quickly gloss over this feature, but I actually think this is a big deal, especially if you like to use a lot of different folder structures. Being able to color code them and even add emojis will be super helpful. And like I mentioned earlier, being able to place any folder right onto the dock is so super useful because from there you can just drag any file into whatever app you have open and start using it. Now guys, I know this isn't anything you've never seen before and there's plenty of devices that can already do this and that have been doing this for many, many years. But until now, the iPad wasn't one of those devices and a lot of us really wanted this on our iPads, not on some other device. And now it's finally here. So let's just try and enjoy it. Anyway, we're not finished with the updates just yet because it's not just Mac features finding their way onto the iPad. There's also some Mac apps coming to the iPad and a big one for me is Preview. And again, this sounds like something that should have been on the iPad ages ago and it probably is, but it's here now and I'm stoked. Being able to preview media, apply markups to images and edit PDFs without having to use multiple and sometimes expensive third party apps will be fantastic. Now, another big one, and I would even say huge one, especially for my iPad mini peeps, you know who you are, the phone app is finally coming to the iPad. So you will be able to make and take calls directly from the iPad. Now this will 100% work when it's linked to your iPhone. I've tested it and it works beautifully, even on this early developer version. But I've also heard that this will work on iPads with a cellular plan without your iPhone. I'm not 100% sure this is accurate and I can't really test it because I don't currently have a cellular iPad. But if this is true, this is going to be huge because I know for a fact that a lot of diehard iPad mini users have been itching to leave their iPhones at home and just use their iPad mini as their everything device. Now guys, of course, we can still hook up the iPad to an external monitor and I have been testing that as well. And that's where you'll really experience a huge difference with the previous OS. You can adjust the screen settings, change the arrangement and between the full cursor support, the resizable and movable windows and the fact that you can now right click files and folders to get a full-blown menu truly makes this feel almost like a proper desktop experience. And I say almost because of course this still is an iPad and most iPad apps are not the same as their full Mac equivalent. These apps are optimized for touch, which means some features will be different or even missing. A lot of developers have always focused on making smaller, more streamlined versions of their apps for the iPad. Of course, we might see some developers upgrading their apps with the new iPadOS features in mind, but I don't think we'll ever see full Mac apps on the iPad. That was never the vision. And personally, I also don't really think that's the point of an iPad. If you want full-blown Mac features, well, you should probably just get a Mac. What Apple did finally achieve though, and I say finally because this should have happened many iPads ago in my opinion, is that Apple is finally letting the iPad live up to its potential. Is there room for improvement? Absolutely. But I see iPadOS 26 as a new beginning, a new direction, if you will, and these very welcome new features are just the start. I am genuinely very pleasantly surprised by this update. This makes me want to blow the dust off my iPad Pro and give it a place in my daily routine again. And I can't wait to see where Apple, as well as the developers of our favorite apps, will take this going forward. Guys, let me know in the comments what you think. Do you share my enthusiasm or had you hoped for a bit more than this? Let me know. 
If you liked the video, please give one of these, and if you didn't, just hit dislike twice. Thank you for watching, see you in the next one.